Overall, my big prediction is this whole notion uh, of practical innovation, ESG, and and let's throw DEI in there uh, if if we want. So we had essentially for, gosh, eight, seven years, near zero interest rates and money was free. Uh, we had the pandemic to hit, uh, which, right, we shut down, which shut down people's ability to work um, and create stuff. For the most part, if you were in the tangible world, uh, those of us uh, in the non-tangible world, non-factory, right, we could work from home. And then we poured trillions of dollars we gave away for free. We printed more money. Uh, and, and here we are paying for it, right? We have high interest rates uh, driven by the Fed activity that, that was in there to lower inflation that was driven by all the free money that, that we give out. And heck, I think there were 3 million U.S. workers who just decided I'm not even going to go back to work. Uh, either they were comfortable in their parents' basement or they had enough money to kind of ride through that or they just, you know, decided to to give up. So. Where I'm at now is growth isn't in vogue, uh, EBITDA is. And I think that that's true for startups. Uh, but I also think that that's going to be even more true for uh, bigger companies out there. So I think we're even the biggest companies, right? The trillion dollar companies are going to get away from innovation for the sake of growth into practical innovations. You're going to see some projects that are going to get cut. You're already seeing uh, these, these big companies get rid of it. So practical innovation that has a clear line of sight, uh, probably going to get rid of some of the risky, riskier types uh, of, of ventures. And I also think, you know, you're sitting there, board of directors, let's uh, bring in some ESG action. If ESG, now, first of all, I just want to say that, uh, love it or hate it, the pressure is on boards of directors to hit their ESG targets. I, I don't want to debate uh, those targets and whether they're going to save the planet uh, or not. All I'm going to say is that the, 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 they're real. What I do know is that if you are hitting your ESG goals and not hitting your financial goals, you will be tossed. Uh, so this practical ESG uh, I think we'll we'll come in, and I and I think you know we've talked to Dan and you and I have talked to some I think very insightful uh, CEOs uh, like Darius uh, Darius Adamchik uh, and Arvind Krishna that quite frankly supply a lot of the companies in manufacturing and and, and warehousing, and uh, I think that uh, this notion of ESG for ESG's sake is not going to be in vogue next year, but good for the environment, good for the business, I think it's going to work. So that's where I think we uh, are moving. And by the way, I hope we're going to see some uh, big um, breakthroughs in fusion uh, energy. That would be amazing. Mini, mini nukes. That would be great. Yeah, maybe that, maybe a little crisper in the process. So I'm going to, I want to, I want to, I want to, we're going to do a bonus uh, Twitter section at the end here, but I want to finish with a, with a more non-controversial 2023 prediction. Um, and by the way, I liked yours a lot because I, I've been using the words economical or practical um, ESG for some time. So I couldn't agree with you more, Pat. Did I just um, lift did, did, did I just steal your... I'm no, not giving you credit. No. You know me. I, you know how it works, though. I come up with quips that have no solid backing, and you actually give all the backing, and then we come out of meetings, and I get all the credit because I gave the one liner. You know. <laughs> By the way, there, for the record, there was something a call we were on in the last week of the year where I did you hit the quip home run? Did you hit? The I, quip I got run? the quip. I got the home run. All right. All right. All right. I, Better together, buddy. We know this. this is I know, I do. Um, so I, I, I call it, it's the year of hashtag better together. It's the year of iteration over innovation or iteration of innovation. In a down economy with all the things that you talked about, high interest rates, high inflation, job cutting, economic uncertainty, companies are 
you know, Armin Krishna, we mentioned, said that he thinks IT is the most protected line item in any budget, but budgets are still smaller. So you have a 20% smaller budget, it may be protected, but you're still going to see that 20% go across the organization. Um, companies are going to try to get more out of the technology they've already bought. I've mentioned this a few times on this pod. I mentioned this uh, last week on a few different on, uh, interviews I did on TV, but I like names like IBM, Cisco, Dell Infrastructure, HPE, Oracle, SAP, just as a few names that will do really well. And that's because companies are going to need to do more with their current infrastructure, with their servers, their storage. Um, they're going to need to do more with their data. They're going to want to do more with their existing software deployments. They're going to want to uh, do more to secure their environments. Um, and these kind of core IT companies, they were less cool. They didn't go up a ton. They never saw their PE uh, ratios swell up to 60 or 100 or 200. Um, most of them saw very uh, conservative growth, but you saw IBM reach an all-time high late in this year, or sorry, 52-week high. I'm not sure if it was all-time, 52-week high. We've seen companies like Cisco, Dell's infrastructure has done really well. HPE's GreenLake keeps growing. We saw, you mentioned Oracle's solid growth and SAP's cloud growth. This is because companies are going to be like, well, we were going to lift and shift. We were going to make a big strategic move, but you know what? We're going to wait a year. We're going to wait two. And that means double for these companies because one, it means the budget shifts from whatever that new project was back to them. And two, it gives these companies more years to stay sticky and to keep those customers in the longer term as, as they continue to innovate on the technologies they have, even as new and exciting data and cloud providers come into the fray. So I think in 23, until we see some really clear signs that we're going to return to growth, we're going to return to near or very low interest rates. And you're going to start to see that uh, that uh, slingshot for those kinds of companies. It's going to be these solid day in, day out companies that are going to do really well 